Our ultimate objective is to build up a large body of local jurisprudence so that <clears throat> local decisions can be cited first instead of English decisions. Australia has succeeded in doing that many years ago, uh, facilitated by a much larger pool of lawyers working in a much larger economy, um, and most of whom were educated in the Australian law schools. However, building up a body of local jurisprudence in a small jurisdiction is an immense task that requires a sustained intellectual effort by the courts. It would be easy for our courts simply to continue to apply English decisions. In contrast, it would require a much greater effort to decide when and to explain why they should not apply. Now, being a small jurisdiction, whatever we do, our image on the radar screen of common law jurisdictions will remain small. To give an example, in 2009, the Court of Appeal decided in TQ and TR to recognize a foreign prenuptial agreement on the division of matrimony assets made between a Dutch citizen and a Swedish citizen in the local divorce. The court also gave guidance on prenuptial agreements in custody, care and control, and maintenance. The decision merited a short report in the Straits Times. In 2010, the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom also recognized a foreign prenuptial agreement in the case of Granatino against Rock. Maker. That decision, however, however, reverberated around the common law world as a landmark decision in matrimonial law. The Sunday Morning Post in Hong Kong even had a full-page write-up on the case entitled, with heading, I quote, UK ruling flags change in divorce deals, close quote. With mention that the decision would, and I quote, likely influence Hong Kong courts. In 2000, Lord Wolf, on the visit to Singapore, commented that, and I quote, so far as procedural justice is concerned, Singapore set standards to which others aspire, close quote. I think we still do, but since April 2006, we have also decided as Professor, Professor Michael Hall anticipated, to, and I quote, refocus on the law and its internal values rather than on its management and measurement by external criteria with an increased attention to the quality of decisions, a fine tuning of the balance between fairness and efficiency. Now much of what you hear today at this conference would be the fruits of this decision. The fine-tuning has resulted in slightly longer but still manageable appeal hearings. It has also resulted in longer expository judgments. Now, whether such judgments <clears throat> have clarified, improved, or confused the law or broken new grounds are matters for which our expert speakers would explore and expound at this conference. 